This is our complete Facebook live streaming tutorial for beginners. So we're gonna share exactly how to go live on Facebook using your iPhone, your Android, your Mac, or your PC, so you can get your Facebook live streams up and running fast. We're gonna start off by looking at Facebook's options themselves. So I'm gonna show you how to go live on Facebook from a phone and from a desktop computer, just using tools that Facebook themselves give you. And then I'm gonna show you how you can take this one step further and create more professional looking live streams using external software or apps. So I'm over on the iPhone now, the process is the same for Android. But with Facebook open, we wanna first choose our Facebook profile or page that we want to go live from. So we can press down the bottom right-hand corner here and we can switch between the different accounts that we have access to. So I'm gonna leave this here on my personal profile for this video. We'll then wanna come back to the home area here and then we can either press the little plus button at the top and come down and choose live or we can tap on where it says what's on your mind as if we're going to make a post. And then in here, one of the options for a post is a live video. We can see that near the bottom there. If we press on that, it's going to ask us to grant permissions so that Facebook can use our camera and microphone and everything. We want to allow that. But then we can see straight away, we are on camera here. So this is where we can get our stream set up. So again, straight away, we can verify at the top here, the profile in this case that I've selected to go live to. We can then below that select the type of live stream. So right now it's set to public, but if I press on that, I do have the option here to go live just to friends. So it says your friends here on Facebook. We could choose friends except. So if there's certain people that you're friends with that you don't want to see that you're live, we can select that. We also have the ability to select specific friends. If there's only a few people, maybe that you want to be able to see this live stream. Or if we tap down here even further, we can see that we get the option to go live to only me. So this is a great practice environment. So if you want to test this out with no one else watching, then this is a great place to do that. But you can also have other custom lists that you can create here as well. I'm going to choose only me in this case. I'm going to hit save. So then down below that, we've got three options here. The first one here is going to brighten up that shot for you. So depending on if it's dark or your phone that you're using, you could brighten it up if you need to. We can switch between the front and back camera here with this one, and we can mute our microphone up here too. From here, it's a good idea to add a description into your live stream, so we can tap on that now, and we can type something out. So we've got here testing FB live. There's also some AI functionality in here as well to help you come up with the title. We also have the ability to tag people in this as well. So if you're gonna go live with someone, maybe you could tag them in this post. So we can choose done. We've now got our description there. We then get to choose if we're gonna share this to Facebook stories as well. So you can see currently story is set to on. If we tap on that, we can turn that on or off. Now, before we hit the go live button here, there's a few other settings that you should be aware of. Down on the bottom right-hand corner here, if we press on this, this is the settings button, and this is where we can configure some things up. So we could edit our description at the top here, again, where it says add to post. We can add a location to our live stream. If we wanna bring a guest into our live stream and maybe have an interview or Q&A or something like that, we have that functionality here as well. When we select that, we can then go and select our friends here. And it says that they'll be invited to join once you go live. There's also some extra features in here that we can utilize when we're live, things like polls. We can create these ahead of time, ask questions, get people to vote on things. There's also voice enhancements here as well to remove background noise and enhance your voice. So if you're not using a microphone, then this could help you sound better during your live stream. Now there's also an option in here for raising money. So if we press on this, you can see that at the top, we can choose different charities and we can scroll through those or fund raises here as well. So this is going to let people know that we are fundraising on our live stream. It's actually going to help with the payment gathering or gathering donations as you're live as well. But the main one here would be the allow viewers to rewind your Facebook live stream while you're actually live. So if someone saw that you're live, but they maybe missed the start of it, you can choose here whether they can only watch what's actually live right now, or if they have the ability to rewind that live and catch back up from the start. And if we go back to our main interface here, down the bottom left-hand corner, this is again where we can bring in guests. This is where we can enable the fundraising or the charity functionality. And we've also got the ability to add the polls and things with this button here too. So to go live, very obvious, we wanna hit this big go live button there. It's gonna count us down. And then we're gonna know that we're live because it says live wrong way this side. But it also says who we're live to. So right now this is a test live, there's live to only me. You can see that the options have changed a little bit while we're actually live. 
live, we've got access to the same functionality that we did, but we now don't need to dive into menus and things to find it. So things like the muting the microphone is here, the voice enhancement features are here, changing the camera from the front to back, all of that stuff. And we can swipe across here as we need to, to access these things. Now your comments are going to appear here, but if it's overwhelming or you don't wanna focus on questions or comments, you can actually just swipe across on the screen and it's going to hide those while you're live. And then when you wanna bring it back, we can swipe back the other way to see them all again. When we're done with our live stream, we just wanna hit finish down the bottom here. It's gonna take a couple of seconds to close out our broadcast for us. And it says our broadcast has ended. We can then choose if or when we want this to automatically delete. So the default setting here is to delete this after 30 days, but we could keep it for six months or keep it forever if we wanted. And then we can either post it with that setting applied, or we can just delete it here with the trash can down the bottom right. So that was a process on mobile. Now over on desktop, again, we wanna open up Facebook. We then want to choose the profile or the page that we're going to go live to. So I've got my profile selected here. We can then come over here as if we're gonna do a post where it says what's on your mind and we can choose live video. Now in here, we are gonna have a few more options, but the first thing we'll really need to decide on is are we gonna go live right now or are we going to create a live video event? So a live stream in the future. So if we wanna schedule something ahead of time, then we'll choose this one here to create an event. If we just wanna go live right now, then we'll choose this one. So beyond that scheduling piece though, the process is exactly the same. So you need to choose which one you want here. You can also see down the bottom here on the screen, any live streams that you're currently running. You can also see all of your scheduled ones in here too. So I'm gonna pick go live for this one. And then we get almost like this step-by-step -step checklist thing that appears is here on the left. So the first thing it's asking us to do here is to connect our video source. And we've got our option here to either pick a webcam or a camera that's directly connected to the computer, or we can use third-party streaming software, things like Ecamm Live, StreamYard, EVMux. If we're gonna be using something like that, then we have the option here to manually add it and configure it up this way but I'll cover that more very soon. So in this case, we're gonna choose webcam. And then down here, we can select which camera we want. I can then select my microphone here. I'll just pick a different one here so it doesn't mess with the recording. And then if we did want to share our computer screen, then we can do that here as well. But you can't currently share your computer screen and your webcam at the same time. It's gotta be one or the other. The next step is to complete your post details. So over here, again, we get to choose, are we gonna share this to your story or not? We can turn that on or off. We can give this a title, test stream. We can give it a description. We can explain what's gonna happen. We can tag people in this at a location. We can mention that it is going to raise money. So we can set this up as a fundraiser in here as well. And then back over on this left side here, we get to choose where we're going to post. So the default here, because I have a profile selected, is to post on my timeline, but I could also choose to post on a page or post in a group with this live stream too. It also says, when are you going live? So the default, because we picked go live now is now, but we could also switch this to later and we could pick a date and time in the future for this live stream. I'm gonna leave this here as now. We get to choose who we're going live to. So again, very similar to our mobile. The default is public, but we have those same options here for friends, friends accept specific people, specific people, custom audiences, or again, only you, which is a great option if you wanna test this out. So at this point, we really could just hit this go live button and go live. But if you did wanna set up some interactive elements, and if we click on interactivity, we can create some polls in here ahead of time and also ask some questions that'll come up as titles on screen and things. We can add all of that in here before we go live. We can also switch over to our stream dashboard, which is here. So this is really what you'll see when you're live. So you can enable these polls, you can customize things up and obviously see what's happening with your live stream in here too. So we can view our comments, we can see our stream metrics, the quality, we can geek out on all the tech nerdy stuff, but we can also see how many viewers, how many hearts, reactions, all of that stuff directly on this dashboard page too. And then also over here under settings, then we have stream settings and viewer settings. So stream is where we can configure up things to get a little bit more advanced with our stream itself and choose really how much of a delay that there could be for our audience. Again, auto is gonna be fine for most people here. We can also decide whether we're going to allow people to embed this live stream on things like a web page, And we can specify whether we want to unpublish this and remove it the moment that we finish the live stream with this bottom setting. Viewer settings, again, very similar to on mobile, we can 
allow or not people to, while we're live, go back and watch our stream from the start or whether they're forced to just watch from what's happening right now. So that's this allow viewers to rewind. We can turn on or off automatic generated captions. For me, I would leave this one on. And we can also allow whether your viewers can directly message you from watching this live stream too. But once you've got those things set up and configured the way that you want them, we wanna come down here, we wanna choose go live, we get a little countdown again. We've got our preview of our live down here. And at this point here, it says our live video is starting. Now this has automatically jumped us straight back to that dashboard page, which is where we wanna be. This is again is where we can see our stats and geek out and all of our tech stuff here if we want it. But as a beginner, we probably don't need it. But the key stuff here again is the ability to run these polls to view and see what's actually happening with our live in terms of interactivity and viewers. But really here, the comments is probably the main area you're gonna play with. Now we can actually make this bigger. So if we hit this expand video button, then we're now gonna see ourselves bigger so we can make sure that everything is how we want it. To stop the live stream, very obvious, the end live video button down the bottom here, we can press end and it's going to shut that off for us. It's gonna give us some analytics here so we can review how everything went. And we have the ability to trim down our live stream to create a separate video clip from our live stream or we can delete it and we can go back to the Facebook newsfeed. So that's how easy it is to go live on Facebook using the Facebook app, but also the Facebook website with their own built-in options. But for those of you looking to take things to the next level, then that's where there are so many different tools and apps and things that you can use that will allow you to go live to Facebook and to other places as well, but add in things like guests, titles on screen, easily share your computer screen, multiple cameras, multiple guests. And we've got quite a few videos on our channel where we share the best live live streaming apps for Mac, for Windows, for iOS, for Android. So I'll have all of those linked in the description box below for those of you that wanna geek out on this and find the best tool for you. But a great all-rounder right now is EVMux. It's very, very similar to StreamYard, but lately we're having better success with this. And it's a tool that gives you a decent amount of customization, but still remaining very, very easy to use. And this is something that just runs in your web browser. So you can use this from your mobile devices as well as desktop. Now, again, we do have dedicated videos and tutorials on this stuff, but really quickly, all we need to do is log in. We can then create our live stream. We give it a name. We can then choose where we wanna go live to. Again, we're not just limited to Facebook here. So we could pick our Facebook page or profile. We could also pick our YouTube channel. We can actually broadcast live to multiple places just by selecting them. So let's choose Facebook. We can call this test stream. We could give it a description. We could also schedule this up for later. So you can see a lot of the settings flow through from here as well. We can choose save. We then go ahead and choose our camera, microphone, all of that stuff. But you can see already we've got things like echo cancellation, auto volume leveling. There's shortcut keys for us to be able to customize up the experience and access stuff quickly. We can add virtual backgrounds. We can feature people's comments on the live stream itself and have little messages and things pop up and notifications when different types of comments or super chat or donations and things actually happen. So then we're taken here to our dashboard interface and this is really what we're seeing when we're live. So we can customize this stuff up. We can switch between different layouts and different screen shares and things. We can pick stuff up. We can move them around to change things on the fly. There's even more advanced modes if we want to. We can play videos. We can bring up titles and text. We can also get really advanced and add different scenes and stuff in here as well. So we can switch between different layouts and different looks, bring in guests, add music and sound effects, and really just create amazing interactive live streams that are gonna be engaging for our viewers. But again, it's something that's simple and easy to use because once we've got this stuff set up the way that we want it, as basic or as advanced as we want, we just hit go live to the destination or destinations we'd picked and we're live. The comments and everything all come through. We can tap on them to feature, to hide them. Like there's no need to go anywhere else. So for those of you that are looking for a step up from what Facebook offers you straight out of the box, there's lots of different options and EVMux is a great one. So for a full breakdown on our top recommended live streaming tools for Mac, for Windows, for iPhone, for Android, check out the links on screen, but also in the description box below, because there's too many for on screen. But there's also a ton of other resources and links in the description box below to help you even further. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers.